Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. I'm Brian Parks. In this video, I want to talk about why I switched from uh, Mac OS over to Windows uh, when I bought my my now current uh, development machine. But to, to set this story up, let's go back a few years uh, to when I was in college uh, and I got my first Mac. At the time, I was still using the, the ThinkPad that you saw in yesterday's video, uh, possibly in the video before, but definitely yesterday's video. Uh, and I was I was running uh, alternately Windows and Linux. I didn't dual boot. Uh, there were uh, several reasons I didn't dual boot, but I, I didn't dual boot. I had two separate hard drives, one with Windows, one with Linux. Uh, and by the time I, I ended up getting my first Mac, I was using the Linux hard drive uh, most of the time. Uh, the challenge was at that time, Wi-Fi support in Linux was uh, iffy at best. Uh, WPA supplicant existed, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't very easy to use and the university's wireless system did not make it any easier. Uh, so I'd take my laptop to class and I'd spend the first 15, 20, 30 minutes uh, just trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. That was frustrating. I really wanted a machine where I could bring it to class, I could open it up, have it connect to Wi-Fi and you know be able to do whatever I needed to do. Granted, at the time I was doing mostly SSHing into other machines, other Linux machines, um, so I really didn't need the machine to do anything, do much uh, on the machine itself, uh, because I was planning on doing everything on, you know, remote machines. All I needed was that Wi-Fi connection, uh, and I was I was never really impressed with the look of the MacBook Pros or the especially the MacBooks. Um, the, the MacBook Pros always seemed a little expensive, uh, and the MacBooks at that time were the, the the white plastic. I guess there was a black plastic version as well, but they they were plastic. They just looked, I don't know. To me, they looked kind of cheap. Uh, but when they released the in two thousand eight, they released the unibody aluminum MacBook. That looked fantastic to me. It, it looked amazing. Uh, I went out the next week or something. Uh, to the Apple Store, there was actually an Apple Store right down the street from where I went to college, which was convenient, and I, I bought one. Uh, wasn't anything, you know, no crazy specs. It was just something off the shelf, uh, and I really liked it. Uh, both the from the user experience perspective, I felt like I could do a lot more. I could I could use a lot more of the available screen space, even though the screen was actually smaller. I got a 13-inch MacBook. Whereas before I was using a 15 or 17 inch Windows machine. I just felt like I had more control over, over the windows that I was looking at uh, from, the, from the Mac OS software. Um, and it, while not being Linux, it is, it is Unix-y, uh, it, it felt familiar and the terminal was similar enough that I, 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 I could just make sense of it. It, 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 it worked, it made sense. Um, so I, I used that for a while, uh, and even when I, I when I started my first company, uh, that's that's the machine I did most of my development on. Um, that was a lot of PHP work, and it turned out that it was a really good development machine. Uh, Mac OS, out of the box, even still, it comes with a Python interpreter installed. Granted, right now it's Python 2.7. That wasn't an issue back then because Python 2 was the only Python. Um, and it comes with, uh, I think it might even have PHP installed. I don't remember. Uh, but it has a lot of the stuff that you need to, to get going. Obviously, Xcode tools uh, give you Git and all that stuff. You don't have to install a whole lot, uh, maybe just the Xcode command line tools, in order to get a dev environment up and running. And that was one of the things that I really, really liked about it. Uh, and even when I started my, my first company, uh, actually when I restarted started it for the second time, uh, everybody got a, a MacBook, and that, that's actually the, the refurbished MacBooks that uh, until recently were my, what was my, was my main development machine. Uh, the reason being, uh, I could, I put together a, a, like a two page dev environment setup document, and that's it. I've worked places where the dev environment setup document is multiple pages long. We're talking 15 or 30 
and I was able to get it down because I was using a Mac uh, and because especially by that time things like Docker and uh, what was the um, oh I can't think of the name but the the uh, the in a VM development environment Vagrant uh, Vagrant was was new on the scene so there were ways to use the functionality that came on the Mac and have a dev environment spun up super quick so that was really awesome and that's why I stuck with the Mac for, well, basically since 2012, up until the, begin the beginning of last year. So what changed between the, uh, then and now? Uh, one thing that changed was the, the type of code that I was writing uh, was, kind of, was kind of a big factor. I went from being primarily a PHP developer to being primarily a C-sharp developer. And that was enabled by uh, C Sharp and ASP.NET Core becoming open source and cross-platform. So you didn't have to, well, the irony is that you didn't have to run Windows anymore in order to use C Sharp. But what that really meant was that even while I was using a Mac, I started writing a lot of stuff in C Sharp because it, it feels like a more natural language to me. Uh, I, I personally really like strong strong typing and static typing. PHP doesn't have that. Not a knock on PHP by any means. Uh, PHP definitely has some cool features. Uh, you know, that might be argued, but some, there are some cool things that PHP can do because it doesn't have uh, as strong typing as C Sharp. Uh, but I really like strong typing, so C Sharp really worked for me. And it was nice that I could do that on the Mac and uh, really carry that over into the. Uh, you know the Windows ecosystem. I wasn't I wasn't losing anything by going that direction, and in fact, uh, even still, the developer tools for C Sharp on the Mac are still not up to the level that they are on Windows. Visual Studio is by far the best IDE on the planet. Um, Visual Studio for Mac doesn't hold a candle to it. Doesn't even come close. Visual Studio Code, absolutely fantastic. It's what I use every single day for work now. Um, the only downside to Visual Studio Code is that it doesn't uh, support some of the, like create a new controller, or create a new class, those sorts of things. You have to write all that code uh, by hand in, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, you might be able to install some extensions to make that a little easier, but for the most part, it's it's it is a code editor. It is a it is a text editor that that uh, is extended to be an IDE as opposed to what Visual Studio is. Um, Depending on the project, sometimes I, I'll use Visual Studio for a project, sometimes I'll use Visual Studio Code. Um, since a lot of the stuff I do now does involve front end, I use Visual Studio Code, but that's that's a separate discussion. So anyway, why did I switch from Mac to Windows? The other reason is that I, I, I kind of started getting really unimpressed with what Apple was doing, with what the operating system looked like, how it worked, uh, and especially on that machine that I had, it was really slow. Uh, granted, I, I'm totally assuming that if I had gotten a new machine, it would be super fast. And in fact, th that's the case. So th this is a Mac. Uh, this is my, my current work machine. Um, if they'd given me a Windows machine, I would have used a Windows machine, If they but they gave me a Mac, so I'll, I'll use a Mac. Totally fine with that. This is a fantastic machine. Uh, it's really fast, um, and the, the, you know, the operating system doesn't feel sluggish at all. So I'm, I, I totally understand that because I was running a, at that point, eight year old machine, now it's nine years old, uh, that's probably why it was super slow, super sluggish. Totally understand that, not an issue. Uh, but I just wasn't really impressed with, with what I could do with the Mac. Um, and it also meant that I couldn't do Windows development, which was actually becoming more and more a part of, of what I was doing uh, professionally. I was, I was building software for people who were running Windows. And it's really hard to build that on a Mac. Uh, you know, even if you write the code on a Mac and then build in a CI environment on Windows, that, that, that is just too much of a pain. Much easier to write the software on Windows and then also have the CI environment. Um, but then I, then I have access to, you know, the native Windows APIs and I can, I can actually be developing in a similar environment to the one I'm deploying to. Uh, so that, that's always a good thing. Um, the other reason is that Windows 
had added a lot of cool functionality. Uh, and I'll be honest, Windows Subsystem for Linux, coming from a Linux background, I looked at Windows Subsystem for Linux and thought that Windows had completely missed the mark. Uh, I thought that if anyone actually wants a real Linux environment, this is not what, they, what they're really looking for. Uh, this is not the environment for them. But it turns out that that's really not what Windows Subsystem for Linux was designed for. And once I realized that, once I realized how Windows Subsystem for Linux was intended to be used, somehow it just all made sense. And, um, and it, it, it's worked. Obviously on my channel, I've done some videos where I, I run things like PHP in Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, just so that I can I can take advantage of kind of the, the, uh, the environment that PHP was designed to be run in. Uh, and also it has the added bonus of I'm not cluttering up the Windows side uh, and I can still develop on Windows and run in Windows subs Subsystem for Linux. That integration is something that the Microsoft Teams have, have just done really well. Uh, so that among other things that were new to Windows really excited me about Windows whereas some of the things that Apple was doing with Mac OS just didn't excite me about Mac OS. And then finally uh, the, the price point. I think I mentioned that I priced this out uh, and it came to about $3,000 and when I bought this I think it was about $1,300. So huge difference in price. Granted the Mac does have, have better specs so even if we were going to compare specs we'd be talking maybe $1,300 to $2,000 to $2,500. Still a big difference um, and for me the uh, the, the added, the, the value wasn't there uh, for me to spend that extra almost a thousand dollars to get what I know is a, I mean the Macs are quality hardware, absolutely, nothing, no knock against Mac, it's just that it, you know, it really wasn't in my budget and it, it didn't, uh, it, it wasn't worth it to me to spend that extra money, uh, especially since I don't really have a preference of what operating system I run. I. I'm kind of an equal opportunity offender. I, I hate all of them equally. Um, but yeah, the Windows machine has been working for me. It's been my primary dev machine uh, for uh, you know personal projects uh, for the last year and a half, over a year and a half at this point. Uh, and I, I, I really like it. I, I, I definitely recommend it as a, as a dev machine if that's the direction you're going. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of why why I switched from Mac to Windows and you know if, if any of those things change I, I'm more than happy to switch back to Mac in the future um, but for right now I'm happy with the Windows machine and uh, in the future I'll probably replace it with with another Windows machine or I might go with Linux on the desktop but I probably won't go back to Mac just because of, of the price issue and because there's really no nothing compelling me to use Mac OS over those other operating systems so Hopefully this was helpful uh, to some of you. Uh, toward the end, I feel like I kind of started rambling, but you know, I, I think it's it's good to know, it's good to talk to people, and th and and hear why they pick specific machines, you know, because there definitely is like a coolness factor associated with the the Apple machines, right? Uh, if you're working for a, a, a new startup, you have to be using Mac because Windows just isn't cool. Uh, that's fine, but realistically, which machine will help you get your work done? Um, and for different people, that's going to be different. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions or you know anything that I didn't mention that you think is different between the, the two that, that maybe would play into your decisions, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you have any ideas for future topics for me to talk about, definitely leave a comment below. And of course, like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.